Hey guys, happy Wednesday mid-afternoon. Um, so I told you I was gonna going to create a story novel time and send it out to you. So I am so excited to start this book with you. It is Shiloh and you can already tell by the front cover, right? Look at the picture. There's a boy and a dog. The title is Shiloh. So that's already my snapshot of my main idea. Main idea that it has to be about Shiloh. Something about Shiloh. Um, who is Shiloh? What is Shiloh? Where is Shiloh? We're going to figure that out. I'm going to only read the first chapter just to start for today. While I'm reading, I want you to be thinking about two things. Who's the main character? Three things. Who's the main character? What point of view is it being told in? Is it being told with the character inside the story, first person, or outside the story, third person? And why is this setting so important to this book? Okay? Um, as I'm reading, you're going to notice something. Something's going to be said again and again. I gotta make sure you can see it, okay? So, is it backwards? It's backwards for you all. Rats? Well, that's okay for right now. So, why does this keep showing up again and again? Okay, you're gonna notice something about two characters where something's going to be done or said again and again. So, we need to be thinking why, okay? And that's what we're going to be talking about. It's going to, the answer to that question, why does this keep showing up again and again, is going to tell us about the theme, the conflict in the story, and the characters. It's going to all apply to that plot. Okay, remember our plot? Settings, characters. Problem, solution, rising action, falling action, twist, the plot twist, the turning point, the climax, which is our aha moment. Okay? All right, Grayson, you got to get out of the video. All right, so that's it. Okay, so Grayson's going to get out of the way, and we're going to read. All right, so again, why does this keep showing up again and again? What about the characters? Who's telling the story? And what's so important about the plot? Shiloh by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. Such a good book. Okay. Chapter one. The day Shiloh come. We're having us a big Sunday dinner. Dar Lynn's dipping her bread in her glass of old cold tea the way she likes it. And Becky pushes her beans up over the edge of her plate in her rush to get them down. Ma gives us her scolding look. Just once in my life, she says, I'd like to see a bite of food go direct from the dish into somebody's mouth without a detour of any kind personal connection. I understand the struggle. She's out looking at me when she says it though. It isn't that I don't like fried rabbit. Like it fine. I just don't want to bite down on buckshot. It's all and I'm, ch and I'm checking each piece. I looked at the rabbit over, the, over good Marty. Stop. Stop her. And you won't find any buckshot in that thigh, Dad says, buttering his bread. I shot him in the neck. Somehow I wish he hadn't said that. I pushed the meat from one side of my plate to the other, threw the sweet potatoes and back again. Did it die right off? I ask, knowing I can't eat it unless I had it. Soon enough. You shoot its head off clean, Darlin asks. She's like that. Dad chews real slow before he answers. Not quite, he says, and goes on eating, which is when I leave the table. The best thing about Sundays is we eat our big meal at noon. Once you get your belly full, you can walk all over West Virginia before you're hungry again. Any other day, you start out after dinner. You've got to come back when it's dark. Okay, let's stop here. 
We're learning about the characters, the family. We already know that the character, he is a boy. The setting is in West Virginia. The author just told us that. And it keeps saying, which is when I leave the table. Somehow, I wish. I push the meat. I, 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 I. Me, 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 me. That tells us it's in first person. So, a character inside the story. This is obviously the main character. All right. I take the .22 rifle dad had given me in March on my 11th birthday and set it up on the road to see what I can shoot. Like to find me an apple hanging way out on a branch. See if I can bring it down. Line up a few cans on a rail fence and shoot them off. Never shoot anything moving, though. Never had the slightest wish. We live up in the hills above Friendly, but hardly anybody knows where it is. Friendly's near Sisterville, which is halfway between Wheeling and Parkersburg. Used to be, my, ba my daddy told me, Sisters Sisterville was one of the best places you could live in the whole state. You ask me the best place to live, I'd say right where we are. A little four-room house with hills on three sides. Okay, so this is the character giving us insight on where um, their they live and it tells me that it's only a four room house so it's a small house and it's set in between hills okay so there's three hills on each side so they're probably in a valley of some sort um so i'm visualizing that there's a lot of land by their house afternoon is my second best time to go up in the hills though morning's the best especially in summer early early morning on one morning, I saw three kinds of animals, not counting cats, dogs, frogs, cows, and horses. Saw a groundhog, saw a doe with two fawns, and saw a gray fox with a reddish head. Bet his daddy was a gray fox and his mom was a red one. My favorite place to walk is just across this rattly bridge where the road curves by the old Shiloh schoolhouse and follows the river. River to one side, trees on the other. Sometimes a house or two. And this particular afternoon, I'm about halfway up the road along the river when I see something out of the corner of my eye. Something moves. I look, and about 15 yards off, there's this short-haired dog, white, with brown and black spots, not making any kind of noise, just slinking along with its head down, watching me tail between his legs, like he's hardly got the right to breathe. A beagle. A beagle. Maybe a year or two old. I stop. The dog stops. Okay, so I'm going to pause right here real fast. So right now, we're learning that this character likes to hunt. Well, not particularly. He doesn't like to shoot anything that's alive, but he likes to explore the outdoors. Um, he likes to go outside, and it, he kind of seems like he likes to be by himself when he goes exploring. Something cool that I noticed is the language. The reason why it makes it an 890 Lexile, 890, whatever, it's backwards, sorry. But the reason why it makes it an 890 Lexile is because of the way that they speak. They have that country slang. It's their country jargon is essentially what it is. So I looked that rabbit over good. So it's the way that they that they leave words out to make it correct or clear English, for lack of better explanation. Um, so what I like about it is that the way that they speak, we have to kind of piece together that they're that they're hunters. Dad obviously hunts for their food. Um, and fried rabbit, like have you ever eaten that before? Probably not. I haven't. Well, um, maybe if I was dared and I could get paid a million dollars, maybe I would. No, I definitely would. 100%. If you pay me a million bucks, I'm going to eat that rabbit. But um, with that being said, it's just really important to understand that this language that's being used is because of where they live and how they grew up or how they're growing up. And he's, ex he's adventurous. He explores. He's not afraid. Um, when I can tell, all he really wants is to follow along beside me. Here, boy, I say, slapping my thigh. 
Dog goes down on his stomach, groveling about in the grass. I laugh and start over toward him. He's got an old, worn-out collar on, probably older than he is. Bet it belonged to another dog before him. Come on, boy, I say, putting out my hand. The dog gets up and backs off. He don't even whimper, like he's lost his bark. Hmm. Like he's lost his bark. I'm actually going to stop right here for today. I'm going to leave it right there. He found this dog, and this dog might have lost his bark. That sounds like kind of the beginning of the, of, for this chapter, let's say, an aha moment. So we have not completely yet gotten to experience the again and again moment, but I don't want to bore you going too long on this video. So I'm going to stop here, but I do want you to think, why would a dog lose his bark? What's wrong with the dog? Or maybe he's just scared. So I want you to start thinking about what are you learning about this character? What is the setting? Why is it so important, especially to the character? And why would a dog lose his bark? Stay tuned for tomorrow. Miss you all.